All right, so I'm going to get going here. Uh, my name is John Fulton. I'm a grant specialist in the grants office in the Heritage Preservation Planning and Outreach Department. Um, so I, yeah, I want to talk about the uh, Heritage Partnership Grant Program uh, and try to try to cover it in general so that if anybody who's interested, you know, can just understand the program. Um, all right, so we're gonna cover uh, just the basics of the program. And then I'm gonna try and focus on uh, how to propose a partnership program, which I don't always do, but uh, talk about uh, the products that people need to uh, concentrate on and produce during their um, during their grant period, um, a little bit about what the experience is like, and then uh, just a few words about uh, closing the grant. All right, so um, I'm gonna have the deadline here several times, but uh, here's the first uh, instance of it. But as I was saying, you know, like November and December uh, are a good time to, uh, you know, get started on the plans and start getting in contact with potential partners or remind people that you've talked to in the pile in the past that um you know this is the year you know 2023 in this case that you know that you want to actually do a partnership and so the the things that um you know you want to think about with a partnership is you know you're an organization your two organizations, your, you know, several organizations in a region, but you have a, a problem, something that you keep noticing that is, uh, you know, that's, that's a challenge to deal with, that maybe you don't have time to deal with. And, you know, all the other organizations that you're talking to, you know, have the have been identified the same problem or opportunity, you know, feeling like, you know, there's an important, you know, date coming up and you want to do some history around that date and, you know, you want to coordinate on it, things like that. It, it can start out as a pretty general desire, but you start thinking about, you know, what do you want to do? What do the partners want to do to uh, address this opportunity or problem? You know, uh, you know, you, you you get your group together who who wants to deal with this, and um, uh, and then you start thinking about what would the solutions be, um, or what is it that you want to put in place that the partner is going to be able to use in the future to uh, to deal with things. So um, the partnership grants are always uh, what we call large grants are always going to be uh, $10,001 or more. Um, a lot of them end up being in the like twenty-five dollars to $60,000 range. There are a few that are around $100,000, but uh, we usually have uh, around $380,000 to give out this year. I believe we're going to have uh, 400,000 to give out. So uh, for there to be, um, you know, more than one or two grants given out a year, uh, hopefully uh, we don't just give them to the largest requests. Um, so again, the funds are, are designed to help these partners with their shared goals uh, for Minnesota history. And the goals address shared workforce services, resources or, you know, creating a partnership in the first place. Uh, sometimes that's necessary. Uh, many times that's necessary. And uh, one thing this program does is try to encourage some, uh, some creativity in the solution. So in the regular grant program, what we call the legacy grants, um, uh, the categories in that program are fit with what uh, the practices that are in the history field. So, you know, creating 
you know, exhibits, fixing up historic houses, you know, writing books, that sort of thing. Um, those sorts of things might come into a partnership program, but um, the the products, the solution that people are coming up with can be a little different. It can be um, somewhat unique and not just based on what the field would normally do or, you know, producing the, the format that, you know, most of us would expect. Uh, I'll say a lot more about this later. Uh, so again, you know, the things that partners might do together is, uh, you know, hire some temporary staff that uh, that they share to deal with something at their locations. Uh, you know, come up with a, a shared idea of treating, you know, similar historical resources that they all have. Um, you know, thinking about streamlining services uh, and then uh, coming together to manage similar resources. Uh, so those are like the broad areas of things that, that organizations might be doing. So again, the four categories for the partnership grants are uh, partnership development and planning. And so that can be, you know, coming up with organic documents uh, to, you know, formalize uh, a partnership in the first place. Um, there might be things that the partnership needs to do to figure out you know, how they're gonna take on this opportunity or challenge that they have. And so there might be some planning that they wanna do. Um, and again, if, uh, you know, if the organizations already have a working relationship, you know, you might not have to think about partnership planning uh, and might not have to be the focus of it, but all the programs uh, should include some degree of it. And, uh, and then the other three categories, shared workforce, shared resources, shared services. Um, they're similar in, it, in the sense that, you know, you're getting funds to like, you know, pilot something or attempt something or uh, test something. Uh, and uh, just the emphasis of them uh, is different. And, you know, it can be quite a bit different, but they, they're they similar in in some ways. Um, so just another way of looking at the partnership grants that you come up with that need, you come up with your plan, uh, you need to get an account uh, with at the grants portal, uh, write an application, get it in on the deadline. Um, once you get the award, which might you might know about in, uh, in this year in April, uh, next year that is, uh, and then you get a year to do the work. You only get a year to do the work. It cannot be any extensions with partnerships. And then you think about doing your final report, getting your products into us, closing up the grant. Um, all right. So uh, I had a, a meeting recently with some uh, folks from uh, History Services and uh, I won't mention who we talked to, but they have um, this, uh, you know, they have a structure that they want to deal with. And like, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's a, it's a big deal for them to get this. Uh, there's a lot of potential in it, but it's in really bad shape. And, you know, and there are already different organizations dealing with this, uh, with the structure, they're going to be involved with it, and they're trying to figure out, you know, how much do we need to, you know, fix up the structure? Uh, how are we going to do that? You know, they want to do programming around it, but that's not super clear what that would be because uh, it's in such bad shape right now. And uh, and so, you know, it came up that you know they should do a reuse study to find out, you know, what can be done. You know what is the history of this, of the structure and the and the business around it, um, and uh, you know. But part of the problem is that the, it's, you know, it's a unique structure, um, and a lot of the people that that do, 
um, reuse studies for, um, you know, residences, you know, they might not know how to deal with this. And so it's the idea that they could try to put their own group of specialists together and, you know, produce a, a report talking about the reuse of the structure. Anyway, so that's just an example of, of uh, sort of the brainstorming that someone might do. Um, always with these, what people have to keep in mind is that all the partners need to be involved with the work. So that you're not just hiring, say, one of the partners to do work for the other partners. Uh, it's the partners all need to be involved in some sense, in some material way with the, with the grant work. And then all the partners need to benefit from it too. So again, uh, you know, one doesn't just function as a vendor and you know get paid but they need to be there needs to be something about the project that will help their their mission and so uh in november it makes sense to you know to start that conversation well with potential partners if you don't know who they are yet uh talking to consultants about you know who's able to do the thing that you have in mind to do uh and then you know, working on uh, narrowing down a budget and a work plan in December obviously makes sense. Uh, and then, you know, thinking about, you know, writing the actual application in January and getting it in uh, in 2023 on, on the 20th. Um, you know, we like to think that the the challenge with the applications is not the application itself, but it's it's coming up with a good plan that's easy to explain. And uh, we feel like that really is the hard part. But if uh, if anyone needs help with their application, we're we're happy to help as much as we can in the in the grants office. So um, just talking about the application, there's certain uh, parts to it, uh, the narrative fields that answer a lot of the questions that, you know, we, the, the administrators and the, uh, uh, the content reviewers, they need to have answers to these questions to be able to judge if we should be funding, um, you know, a grant. So here are, you know, some of the questions that have to be answered and sort of the sections of the application that um, that they would go into. Um, obviously, it's a lot to read, to read, but um, it's, you know, mainly the main thing is you're trying to give us a clear picture of what's going to happen, a clear picture of how the expenses of, from the budget will be going to accomplish all the things that one wants to do and uh, and talking about things like who's going to do the work, how do they need to be qualified? Um, you know, again, what's your you know what's your final product or result is going to be, and how that uh, product will have uh, public benefit to the whole state after the grant is finished. So, and talking about the the product of the program. Uh, Again, I say this is a real challenge of these grants. I feel like, you know, we allow and encourage uh, some flexibility in what that uh, final product might be. But um, I think, you know, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, that, you know, one is like really seeing clearly what product is going to help the partners to further whatever it is they want to do. And uh, um, you know, and that flexibility can you know throw people off a bit, I think, um, because it's like, well, you know, we want to meet and we want to figure out what we're doing. Well, that's good, but you know, there still needs to be something at the end of it that is either going to help the the partners, or if it was something that was researched and you learned from, like coming up with at least a report that, you know, is going to be there for the partners to return to 
and uh, something that could possibly be used by other uh, organizations who who are considering a similar um, a similar project. Um, so again, these are some of the things that are involved with determining what the product of uh, of the the grant program you get funds to do will be. Um, and again, it's like the more original you're trying to be, the more specific. Uh, you know, you have the responsibility to be so that, um, so there's not confusion, especially at the end when the grant's closing and you're sort of, you're out of time to do any more work and you just, you know, at that point, you know, you do want to close your grant and, and move on. Uh, so it helps to have that clear in the, in the mind of the partners and the application from the very beginning. Um, and so, uh, so again, using a category to help narrow down what the product might be. Um, these are just some suggestions. Uh, so yeah, for partnership development and planning, um, you know, quite often the result, uh, what, what is coming out of that is, you know, throughout the program, you're, you're probably working with a consultant or two. And what comes out of that is a, is a report that uh, quite often they've written and that, you know, answers questions about whatever it is you're trying to find out about. For shared workforce, again, you might uh, end up with a report uh, that if you were trying to coordinate documentation uh, for different partners' collections, um, you know, you'd have a report that would, that would talk about that, what the changes are, and might hopefully we can, you know, can include examples of the work that the, uh, that the grant, you know, completed. Uh, shared resources, uh, again, you, you might be sharing at the end copies of cooperative agreements and procedures to manage public records if managing public records uh, in a more uh, coordinated way was the point of the, of the program. And again, you know, for shared services, say, you know, the partners wanted to come together, come up with, a, a you know, some trainings, uh, perhaps for themselves, perhaps for uh, other, you know, for patrons, something like that. And so they might, in the end, have a recording of one of the training seminars, an example, you know, with the examples of supporting materials that were offered. Um, so some specific examples of products, um, the mom and uh, three other um, county historical societies uh, worked together to uh, develop regional history groups to get come up with this toolkit that would help regional history groups to form and to organize themselves. And if um, there is a QR code there that'll take you to that toolkit um, if, uh, if you wanna see it in uh, detail. Another example of a, of a product is the uh, YZ Historical Society along with a lot of the um, a lot of the other historical organizations around Lake Minnetonka uh, were considering whether they should merge or not, and uh, and they went through a very thorough process of of self examination and working with a consultant um, and talking to constituents, the whole nine yards, and it's late, they came up with a, a final report written by the consultant uh, to help them make that decision. And uh, yeah, so in this case, the report was 251 pages. I'm sure that includes covers and so forth, but it's a, it's a lengthy report. Um, the Scott County Historical Society worked with all the partners that are listed there at the bottom of the slide um, to um, come up with a visitor experience plan. That was the product that came out of, uh, of their work on this cultural commission uh, in Scott County. Um, you know, it's, it's a very interesting uh, plan that they came up with. 
And yeah, so the, where does a partnership project like, um, if you do get the grant, you know, I was trying to think of different ways to explain this, but one is just using um, uh, part of part of the work plan and, and timetable for uh, for uh, why is that a historical society's project? And you know, you're gonna, you know, I think what what they did this timetable is is probably similar to what a lot of people would encounter, especially if they're working with consultant. And, you know, you're going to have to hire the consultant in the first place. That takes time. Um, you know, having all the partners meet and figuring out the working process with the, uh, you know, with the consultant is something that takes time. And, um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the meat of the work had to happen, you know, fairly quickly, uh, you know, in the middle of the the grant period, and um, they their planning was was I think was done very well, but even in their case, they had to be. Uh, it took them a lot of time to to conclude things the way that they wanted them to be finished up at the end. Um, so that gets me to like challenges. Um, I'm looking at some specific challenges that uh, one group mentioned, but it's something that a lot of groups dealt with over the last three years. Uh, that you know, COVID kept people from meeting, and meetings are a big part of uh, these grants uh, normally. So uh, things had to move to you know, virtual for them, just as they did for all of us. And, uh, but things like, you know, planning their budgets, you know, were, were thrown into some confusion. And so things like that are the kind of challenges that happened recently. And would like to think that, you know, that's mostly over, or at least we're used to it, uh, to the, uh, um, the problems of, of uh, the pandemic. But but you know, other things are are bound to happen, and um, you know, something that's that's affecting all sorts of grant programs now is the unpredictability of costs, which makes uh, budget planning very difficult. Finishing up in one year is something that's very challenging for for people because, um, you know, I think mainly you know, groups working together, it just always takes more time than you expect. And then what one, you know, organization can pull off by themselves. So um, we do sometimes encourage, I mean, that there be a smaller group of partners involved uh, to help, you know, find those shared goals and to help uh, to make decisions in a slightly faster way. Uh, you know, nothing's a guarantee, but, and again, there's been some, uh, some partnership programs that had a, you know, a very large number of, of partners and we're still able to, to finish up on time. So, um, you know, it's doable for sure. Um, and then here's some more thoughts about, uh, how it can be difficult to work with other organizations. Um, and, uh, things I'll point out are, uh, centralizing your record keeping, um, especially when you're finishing up your grant, um, there are a number of things like expenses, uh, grant expenses that, you know, you want to have control of all those, uh, at least by the time that the, the grant is finishing because, uh, you know, we need to see those records to give people, to give the organizations, uh, you know, their grant funds. We, we need to see what the expenses were to justify those expenses uh, with the grant money. So, um, so that's something that uh, we're seeing is, is, you know, can be very challenging, uh, especially if you have different organizations that do things in different ways. Um, so yeah, just some final report advice. 
again, keep those financials and uh, and keep the invoices that you're getting from consultants or from any other uh, you know expense. And those all have to come in with the final report. And you know we you know read through them and reconcile them with uh, the amount of funds that were supposedly spent. You know, worst case scenario, sometimes if there's, you know, if there aren't any documentation of expenses, we might be, you know, requesting that those funds back. Uh, we don't like to do that. So, you know, the, you know, the best solution is just for those financials to be available and to come in with a final report. And uh, again, it just, you know, it's it's worth saying again that you know, sometimes there's a, some faith that, you know, the organization has always been able to, uh, to spend money and track their expenses well. So, you know, they don't worry about it too much, but when there are other organizations involved, it does make it more complicated. Um, and then, so there has to be some product that comes in with the final report, you know, what we would call a final product. And at minimum, something like a report about the progress of the of the program, uh, the 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 process that was was used throughout, what the results were, what the findings were, um, something like that has to, you know at the minimum has to come in, and and it could even be notes about meetings that you know that occurred throughout, and some sort of you know report that talks about those, you know, lessons learned and next steps and things like that. Here's the schedule again for the round coming up. So the deadline, there's a, that's for the first deadline in January is for pre-application. And so that's when, you know, it's required that you have to get in a pre-application. It doesn't have to be a perfect application in every sense. There can be things that you're still trying to, to get specifics on. Um, but uh, there needs to be enough information for us to, you know, to read and review because with the pre-application, you know, we read it to give you feedback and, um, and we send it back to you and, and let you rewrite the application, hopefully using those comments that we give you about how it can be a stronger application. Uh, final application deadline is going to be March 10th in 2023. You're going to, you know, find out if you got the grant in May. Um, the It's worked out that the partnership grants are always starting uh, June 1st. That's always the start date. Uh, and then the end date is June 1st, in this case, 2024. And then, you know, you get a month to you know once you've the, all the grant work is finished you get a month to work on and then submit the final report here's some links to uh information about the uh the heritage partnership program uh so there's the web page the grants portal is where you need to go to get a a login you know that allows you to you know, start working on an application um, and then grants at mnhs.org is where the, uh, it's a good, you know, a good place to send questions to us. And it's a central, um, it's a central email. So whatever comes in, you know, we know if it, who it should go to, to get the best answer. There is a phone number for our office and, uh, and there's my email. If uh, you know, I have a lot, to, you know, a lot to do with administering the partnership, so uh, I, I love to answer questions about it when uh, they come up. And so that's it from the presentation. Um, if anybody has questions, uh, I would love to hear them. There's several people here who can help answer them if I don't have the answer. But please, uh, anyone who's thinking about, uh, you know, trying to get one of these partnership grants, uh, really do feel free to get in touch and uh, 
you know, uh, like I say, love to help with any part of the process. All right, so David, I, uh, you're saying, so we at the Maple Grove Historic Preservation Society are at the beginning of our grant proposal process, not so much from a, a trying to establish a partnership, but quite a bit of the presentation involves general procedures. So, uh, I, yeah, I hear you. Um, next month uh, for the webinar, we'll be doing what sometimes we call the Grants 101. Uh, it's just, you know, again, we'll be going through some of the general processes with the uh, with the grant program, the, doing the grants, doing the application, uh, and what's involved. A lot of what I was talking about, but more focused on the the legacy grants, the uh, the larger um, Minnesota Historical and Cultural Heritage Fund. So, if, if you get a chance to go to that, that's great. If you uh, if you want to come to the November uh, open house that'll be um, that'll be on the first Thursday of November, and uh, you know generally everyone from the department will be available and able to answer questions uh, if you want to talk to somebody more one on one. But but thanks for your comment. All right, I am going to wind this up. Thanks everyone for coming and uh, we'll hope to see you at a future webinar. Bye-bye.